Hey everybody, uh, two things today. I'm gonna do a quick review of a movie I saw today, which was the Natalie Portman starring film uh, Jackie, about uh, Jackie Kennedy, the wife of President John F. Kennedy. And uh, that's gonna be really short, and I'm also going to talk about some recent stuff that I got, because I always do that, and uh, it's easier to just combine that stuff. So, um, first, I want to say thank you to my friend John, who uh, sent me The Hobbit and Tales from the Crypt Season 3. I'm really excited to watch this stuff. Thank you very much. And uh, I also want to respond to a question that he asks uh, frequently, recently, uh, because I haven't answered. And that is, um, did you know you look like the kid from the original Miracle on 34th Street? <laughs> yeah, I know I've gotten that before. Um, I probably haven't commented because it really annoys me when people tell me that. I know you don't mean it in like an insulting way, but I mean, who wants to look like the kid from Miracle on 34th Street? I don't mean the little girl. I mean that janitor kid for other people watching. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he's a great, he was a great guy, you know, <laughs> but uh, nobody wants to look like that guy. Come on. <laughs> and yeah, but I've gotten that before, but I've also been told I look like other people, more flattering people and... I enjoy that more so but yes I know I have a likeness I feel like part of that is that I need to drop some weight <laughs> but anyway yeah so anyway and another thing um, I did go back to Big Lots and get that other Super Friends DVD this <laughs> this actually says the complete season four so I think in the video where I was talking about how Big Lots has five dollar brand new Superman uh, Super Friends DVDs I think I uh, might have said that this I thought this was like from like the final season or something it's it's all very confusing as far as the way they released the Super Friends show I have no idea uh, if this is truly season four if it is um, and it seems like this one came before the previous one that I bought and I thought it came after because this one has the uh, Wonder Twins a little bit more. This one has like eight episodes. And uh, yeah, eight episodes. And they're like episodes based on like literature. Like there's an episode where they go to a planet that is like the planet of Oz. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's a Mr. Mixelplix episode. And uh, then there are some others that are also like there's one inspired by Aladdin. There's an episode, I think there's a 20,000 Leagues episode. Um, I haven't really sat and watched them all. I took a quick look at the Wizard of Oz episode. <laughs> it was really bizarre. I don't think I got to finish it because I had to go somewhere to a movie or something. But really interesting <laughs> stuff. And if you grew up with the Super Friends, yeah, go to Big Lots. They've got the, this, uh, this DVD set. And also, let me show you the other one that I picked up earlier. I showed this already, but in case you didn't see... This is the other Super Friends. I've got a big stack of DVDs here in Blu-rays. This is the other Super Friends uh, set that I got there. This one doesn't say which season it is. Actually, this says the complete series. That's the kind of stuff that's confusing. See, it's Super Friends, and this is Super Friends, the legendary superpowers, the complete series. This is the world's greatest Super Friends season four. So, I don't know. They were all like, it's all like Saturday morning ABC stuff. Somebody on Amazon.com did a review of one of these and he laid it all out as far as like what, uh, which ones you need to get like the whole show. So I need to go take another look at that. Those are the only two I have of Super Friends. But this was one of my shows on Saturday mornings when I was a kid. Add that to the stack I need to work on. I need to find a place for all these DVDs. Okay, before I get to the movie review, also some stuff that I got recently. Amazon.com has this program called Vine, and in the Vine program, they'll send you free stuff, and you write reviews of it, and every, every well, you can check every day, and they'll have like a new list of stuff for you to pick from, and, uh, but the thing about that is, if you want to get in the Vine program, you basically have to be invited by Amazon. I can't help anybody with getting into the Vine program. Um, what happened was, 
when I was in college, which was a long time ago, um, <laughs> I, I started as a hobby. I don't know why, but I just started writing reviews on Amazon.com. And, um, and you know, I just kept doing it like for years and years. And uh, eventually they invited me to be part of Vine when, when they started the program. So I've gotten a lot of cool free stuff from Vine. And uh, this is a Batgirl doll. Now, I don't usually get dolls anymore. Uh, not like fashion girl type dolls. Um, oh, this is sort of an action, giant action figure. <laughs> um, the thing is, as you know, I love Batgirl. I love Batgirl. So, Barbara Gordon Batgirl. So, I mean, if they're offering me this free, I, I don't go to the store and buy these DC superhero dolls. I do have the uh, action figures from the DC superhero girls, but I haven't bought the dolls. I really don't have space for dolls. But if you're going to offer me one for free, I'm going to pick it up. So yeah, I, I, I accepted it and they sent it. So I'm going to do a review of this on Amazon.com. It'll probably just be a text review. I haven't been doing video reviews on Amazon, but uh, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty cool. I like the style of DC superhero girls because I like cute. I like big eyes. And I, so I tend to like cartoony style girls more than the co the traditional comic book style. That's why when I do buy like superhero comics, it's usually based on the animated shows and stuff. But I do love the Babs Tar Batgirl. I mean, as you saw, you can see it, barely see it. There is a big statue I got recently from Babs Tar Batgirl um, because her style is has a little bit of an animation style to it. I love cartoony looking girls with big eyes and cute kawaii looking. So anyway, so I do love that DC Superhero Girls line, even if the uh, the cartoons that that uh, that it's based on or that are based on it really are uh, are probably written for really small kids. I don't know. I haven't really watched it, but I know it's all in that whole thing that started with Monster High and even going further back to like Bratz and all that. But I like cute girls. I can't help it. Okay, so lastly, before I get to the review, three more Halloweenish items that I picked up recently. Uh, you know, getting out of the whole Christmas thing <laughs> for a moment. Um, so my mom is in the Barnes and Noble club and so she gets like 30% off coupons and stuff like that. And sometimes she can't use them. She gave one to me. So I picked up Haunted Mansion hardcover. This is the collected Haunted Mansion comic. Uh, from Disney Kingdoms, from Marvel. There's also a hardcover Haunted Mansion collection from the company that was doing Haunted Mansion comics before this. Um, I don't remember the name of the company, but there was a company doing Disney comics um, a few years back. If you're a, if you're a reader of Disney comics, uh, they're always changing companies. <laughs> I don't know. I. I don't know what the deal is because there's always Disney comics, almost always Disney comics being printed. But the company that's making them is always changing. Uh, and I was sort of thinking, okay, now Marvel has the Disney comics and Disney has Marvel. And that's why Marvel's doing Disney. And I thought, okay, it's pretty much going to be coming from Marvel from now on. But even still, they've, they've now got... They've got Disney comics coming from Marvel, but then they've also got this other company doing them. I forget what it's called, but they've got another company that's doing the, uh, like Frozen and Pirates of the Caribbean and a few other new new titles that I've never seen before, like those. Um, but like the traditional stuff, which is Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Uncle Scrooge, Walt Disney Comics and Stories, and a few special titles, they're all coming from Marvel now. And... Uh, and Marvel did their Haunted Mansion line. That other company that was doing Haunted Mansion, they were also doing a Tron line. And this was this was before Tron Legacy. Not a lot before, but I guess enough before so that they weren't thinking about Tron Legacy yet. And uh, this company had Disney Comics for a while. They did Tron Legacy. They did a revival of Gargoyles that was picking up from the original show uh, by the actual original creators. They did Haunted Mansion. They did um, they did an Alice in Wonderland comic that was really interesting because it wasn't about Alice. It was about another character. I think it was uh, was it Marianne? Is that was that her name? That the White Rabbit was always looking for his maid. And uh, anyway, I, that was what it was. I think that's what it was about. And uh, I feel like it was another title too. But I did get like the first couple of issues of that. But they did combine that into a hardcover book. I need to look for that. 
But anyway, this is the current, like, recent one, because Marvel has been doing Figment comics. I've got the, the first hardcover of that, and I know I'm getting the second one for, as a Christmas gift. And uh, and there's this one, and like the first one was Museum of the Weird, which is actually a Disney attraction that never actually opened. I think it got mostly transformed into the Haunted Mansion, or partially. But uh, And also, um, they have a comic they made of uh, the uh, the mine train, the, the uh, Big Thunder Mountain train. And uh, I don't know if that one has been made into a hardcover yet. And uh, right now, they've just released uh, the Tiki Room comic, uh, which uh, I assume is also going to get a hardcover release. I'm not sure if I'm forgetting any. But yeah, so I, I'm trying to, to not forget when I go to the comic store that most comics now get collected and put out in like hardcovers or at least collections in general. So I haven't been buying individual comics lately, usually, because might as well wait for the hardcovers or at least the collections. Hardcovers are a little more expensive, but they're nicer. So I did pick that up. I haven't read it. It's still in the plastic. Now getting even more Halloween-ish. This is, uh, this is Giant Halloween Hex. It's a, I guess it's an annual, a, a Disney Halloween annual. There's Magic of Dispel on the cover. That's uh, Uncle Scrooge's nemesis. He, he has many, but this, is, this one is a witch. And uh, this is, uh, I guess, a Halloween annual. And uh, I had to get it off eBay because I went to the comic shop, local comic shop, and they had some, but I didn't have any money that day. I went back and they didn't have any, so I was I really wanted it because I love Halloween and I love Disney comics. So I ordered it off eBay. Had to pay it was kind of the same price, but then I had to pay shipping. So that was kind of a ripoff because after I ordered it, I went back to the comic shop and they put it back out. I don't know. So I should have just asked if they had it, I guess. <laughs> but I'm totally socially awkward and don't like to talk to people. But anyway, so I got it luckily the one I got in the mails and great condition too so i uh, haven't read it again um right now they have their christmas annual is supposed to be out i've checked the comic shop several times already but there's two two comic shops that i go to the other one is more likely to have it so i'll go check them tomorrow or today as you watch this <laughs> um, but that's the the christmas annual is called christmas parade and uh, it's i think the current one, they're calling it Mickey and Donald's Christmas Parade. But it used to be just be Disney's Christmas Parade. Anyway, last item. Uh, this is R2 Boo. This is a Halloween-themed R2 unit uh, from Disney World. This was sold in the Disney parks this Halloween. Now, I went to Disney World with the intention of buying two items in particular. One of them was the Hocus Pocus ornament uh, based on the, like, the Hocus, they have a Hocus Pocus stage show during Halloween now. And they this year they finally had some merchandise other than t-shirts. And uh, they had an ornament and they had a pin. I wanted the ornament because, I you know, I collect ornaments and I knew I was having a Disney tree this year. Um, and it was like 20 bucks if you went and got it. And you had to go to the Halloween party to get it, which is a whole extra ticket. And, um, and I was there at the Halloween party, but as usual, with their best stuff, it was sold out. Like, they don't make enough, to, they promote these items, but they don't make enough to run through the whole holiday, through all the parties, which is really bad, because these are like, they, they use this as, a, as a, one of the things to draw you to the parks, to take these big expensive trips to the parks. Hey, you can get these unique items like R2 Boo here, who I couldn't find anywhere either. <laughs> now, it's possible that this one, they only had it at uh, Star Tours, which we didn't go to that particular park, because in Florida, that's it. that's just at Disney Studios, Hollywood Studios, and this was like a really short trip. We just went to the Magic Kingdom and to Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. So, um, oh, and I did hear that they were supposed to have it at... Um, at uh, Disney Springs, which is their big shopping villa, big, com uh, you know, big big shopping area, area and uh, and dining area, and it's had so many names over the years, but now it's called Disney Springs, and it's bigger than ever. And th they have a Star Wars store there, and it's very cool. And uh, 
you know, they, they, they were supposed to have this there. Did they? I don't know. I don't know where they had this one. I find it doubtful that they were sold out, but they didn't have it at the Magic Kingdom, and I went to Epcot. They didn't have it there. The thing is, the uh, I have the Christmas one from last year. They're supposed to have a holiday one this year, too, but last year they had a Christmas one, and uh, in my previous video of my Star Wars Christmas tree, I also at the end showed a picture of the cake that I made, and I put him on top of the cake. And uh, I got one on the card of the Christmas one, and I also got an extra one to open up. This one, I don't. I might pick up another one to open. I might keep this one on the card. If I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. If I open it, maybe I'll order another. I, I guess that's basically what I'll do. But it's pretty cool. It's very tempting to open. I haven't even looked at it. I just got it like today. But um, he just arrived today. I got him off eBay also because, again, couldn't find him. And I was on a mission to find him over there. Um, but I was going to say the Christmas one that I got, they had it everywhere. They had it at every park last year uh, in uh, uh, Christmas 2015, I think. So I thought this would be the same case, but couldn't find it anywhere. I, I think it was already out, so I don't know. Maybe just in certain stores this year. But I, I finally got one. Very cool. Um, tempted to get another one, but of course I'm paying more because I have to pay shipping. And that, that Hocus Pocus ornament very hard to find at all online and people are asking like 70 bucks for it or something it's like 20 bucks if you were there at the party but they didn't have it that was it's one thing i mean i love disney and i love the disney parks and they can be the nicest all the people can be so nice and everything and they really do things top notch most of the time but not every sometimes they they have their issues like um uh like saying, you know, hey, come for the Halloween party and we're going to have special Hocus Pocus items to purchase and things like that. And then they don't have them. I did end up getting the pin. I've shown that before, the Hocus Pocus pin. It looks the same as the ornament, but it's just a pin, not a full-on ornament. I really wanted that ornament because there's not... I love Hocus Pocus and there's not enough merchandise for Hocus Pocus. There's hardly any merchandise. This is like the only Hocus Pocus merchandise. I want action figures. I want... A line of Disney action figures, I've said this before, uh, like the Black Series Star Wars line, like the Marvel's Legends line, uh, make make a line that is just Disney and Hocus Pocus characters, uh, just and Dick Tracy, um, you know, animated feature characters, just a whole six inch figure line. I mean, I have like a a Rocketeer here from like a different company, but it's not in scale. It's supposed to be six inch, but it's not six inch or seven inch. It's like right in between. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I would love a line like that. Give me like old school action figures. Give me like deluxe sets with like the love bug and, and you know, Dean Jones action figure and, and Buddy Hackett. Yeah, that would be so awesome, you know? And I'd even rebuy Pirates of the Caribbean characters if they came out with a line like that that was six inch because I do have a, a pretty big not complete but a, a nice collection of Pirates of the Caribbean action figures from NECA but those are like seven inch and so they don't fit in with my Star Wars and my Marvel and since those are Disney now they're coming they, they've got Muppet figures now but I think they're also for seven inch line I just wish toys were just all in like the same size range I used to get mad because I had collected Star Wars action figures three and three quarter and like then they started making action figures for everything and none of it was in the same size range as my Star Wars figures. <laughs> but anyway, okay, done with the toy stuff and the movies, cartoons. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, the movie Jackie. Um, I might have to splice this video together because my phone's not letting me record over like 20 minutes or sometimes 30 sometimes 40 it's very unpredictable now but <laughs> i'm having space issues on my phone so this might get spliced together uh, like my last few videos um so uh jackie jackie is like i said it's a movie about uh jackie kennedy now this is sars natalie portman I saw this at the Draft House in South Austin today. It was a South Lamar Draft House here in Austin. Uh, great, great theater. It's got its own parking garage. I love that. Great pizza. All the Draft Houses, you know, have that great uh, carnivore pizza and everything. Uh, 
so I had a nice time, even though I would not have normally jumped at the chance to go see a movie about Jackie Kennedy. There are people who are very into the whole JFK thing. There are people who are just would like to see it for historical value or people who just like biopics. Um, if you just like Natalie Portman, you might want to go see this for that. Um, I like Natalie Portman. I like history, so um, I didn't have any, you know, I wasn't the one who wanted to see this. It was my mom and my sister. But um, like I said, you know, Natalie Portman, I do have an interest in history, even if I'm not like one of these like JFK people who's like super into it, into that particular subject. Um, I do, uh, uh, and, and you know, I love the draft house. I love the draft house and I love movies. So I'm, I'll give like almost any movie a chance, but especially the draft house. I'm, I'm not as much of a drama person. Um, I, I mean, I, there's some dramas I love. There are some biopics that I really like. I don't know how how much I find them rewatchable. Um, I'm more into I like most mostly like movies with at least some kind of fantasy element, even if it's a minor one. But but I I'm a film fan, so I will give anything a chance. Um, and I'm gonna say this was a really good movie. I don't think it's what a lot of people would have expected if they went in like me without because I hadn't seen the trailers at all. I don't I didn't really know what to expect but my sister I think she had seen the trailers and she also um, it wasn't what she expected either in the same regard that you go see a movie like this and you expect a traditional biopic you expect it to be this person's entire life like from when they were like, born or when they were little kids to all the way uh, through maybe all the way to their death or at least through some significant point uh, in their life where things just settled in whatever way they were going to settle. And, um, uh, you know, like something like Walk the Line, which was a really, really good movie. Um, so, yeah, uh, but, you know, of course, a lot of these biopics are the same thing. It's uh, especially with musicians. It's usually like it's usually about a struggle with drugs and cheating and all this stuff. So, um this one turned out to be very unique, and I applaud it for that. Um, I think a lot of people at the end of this movie, it was one of those times you go see a movie and it was silent. The, the audience was silent at the end. Everybody, When everybody was leaving or even when the credits go up. Some movies, credits go up and you hear applause, you know, especially The Draft House. Um, now, sometimes it just depends on the audience. There's no guarantee that just because it was silent that the audience didn't like the movie. But, and I think this might have been a movie that you have to wait a while and think about it. And then you start to say, you know, that was a really good movie. But at first you're like, wow, I came to see this movie thinking I was going to get a good biopic. And the entire movie is just focused on one event in Jackie uh, Kennedy's life. And that event is... Um, her dealing with the uh, the death of John F. Kennedy, the assassination. It's um honestly the movie uh, to get into. I don't know if this would be spoilers. Um, uh, I'm just this is not really a spoiler thing. But if you don't want to hear anything about it, I, I guess just know that it's only about one event in the characters in this person's life, this real person. And uh, it was very good, and the acting is incredible. But you might not know that if you don't watch some footage of the real Jackie Kennedy first, like, interview footage. That was the great thing about seeing this at the Draft House. At the Draft House, they do pre-shows. And a lot of times, this is just funny YouTube clips that have to do with the subject matter. But in this case, they showed uh, clips from interviews with Jackie Kennedy and... Uh, and this um, this uh, program she did on television where she gave a tour of the White House. And that was super important to see before this movie because it talked about that. And it even showed it, Natalie Portman even like reenacted this like tour of the White House thing. Definitely see that before you see this movie. Um, and she, I mean, she, it was it was a big part of this movie. Uh, but basically the movie and you won't know how, how good she's. She's mimicking just like 
becoming Jackie Kennedy if you don't watch this. That really the acting is phenomenal. It's just if you watch the real Jackie Kennedy in those that film footage, that real film footage, she almost has this Marilyn Monroe way of speaking. Now I don't mean in the in the sex sexual kind of way, the over sex style like, but just I don't know, just something about the way she speaks and stuff. Um, and also not a but but add to that or take away from that also not a great screen presence I would say uh, she's she seems very um, very shy in front of the cameras and everything uh, very interesting uh, uh, to watch the real footage of Jackie Kennedy um, and Natalie Portman portrays her exactly it, it, it's amazing and at times even looks like her from certain angles you know um, I mean, to me, like Natalie Portman is much more attractive, but you know, she's she's more my type in a lot of ways. But it was bizarre how they made her look like her, you know. They made her look like Jackie Kennedy, just like especially certain angles. I don't know what they did, but it's, sometimes she did look like her. Uh, but um, really, really great acting from Natalie Portman and and the other actors as well um I don't know the names I don't even know the names of some of the people they were portraying the guy who played John F Kennedy if you're really into John F Kennedy he's not in it very much because basically let me just tell you how it goes this movie starts out with uh, a reporter coming to interview Jackie Kennedy and basically the whole movie is this interview with uh, with her uh, this reporter interviewing her talking about um, well about about the assassination but what she is mostly relating relating to him is the uh, the whole uh, situation the aftermath for her which was about trying to plan the funeral and trying to deal with this this horrible death and trying to deal with should I should I take my kids out in public, you know, for the funeral or this and that? Should I should I go out in public? Am I safe and all this stuff? And uh, it was, um, yeah, y you know, you think you're gonna. Well, let me say that um, they do flash back. They're, it's not just her sitting there being interviewed the whole movie. Uh, they do show, you know, they show uh, her going through all this stuff, um, and. Uh, there are a few brief flashbacks showing her with John F. Kennedy, and the guy looks just like him. And um, and uh, but a, a bigger character in this is uh, is Bobby Kennedy, who is um, you know is is by her side through a lot of this dealing with the um, with the funeral and all that. If you're if you're watching to to find out about the Marilyn Monroe scandal of of you know John F. Kennedy and all that. Or, or any of that kind of drama, like Lifetime movie stuff, you know, or like typical biopic stuff, you're not going to get that. And I guess a lot of people probably went in there wanting that. Um, but I think it was really interesting and, and uh, really good that they, they took a different take on it instead of just the traditional biopic, you know. And I can understand wanting to see that and everything too. Um, although to me, I'm kind of tired of that kind of thing and I think that's what the filmmakers are thinking too. Plus, you get a... A more intimate look at it's a different kind of look into this person's life and who they are by spending more time on one period in their life rather than quick looks at all these different periods trying to condense their life into like their entire life into like two hours uh, this one took and this one I think was a little less than two hours but um, this one Ah, I, I, I thought my my uh, film was cutting me off, but it said a low battery. Okay, <laughs> that's another issue I'm dealing with. Uh, anyway, yeah, this one, um, it uh, it it uh, it focuses entirely on her dealing with this funeral, dealing with the people around her, the way they treat her, uh, what they're gonna let her do, and what she needs to do and get done, and making decisions about you know this while under you know trying to grieve. And trying to figure things out because, you know, when somebody really close to you dies, there's a lot of like, you have a lot of uh, existential questions, you know. Uh, you get a lot of issues, and uh, and then she's got her kids. She's trying to deal with that. Her her kids, her very small children, and uh, so yeah, it was totally focused on showing this period in her life, 
where uh, she was dealing with this really horrible circumstance in which, you know, we all have situations like this. But, uh, you, you know, you get to know the character. And I say character, I mean the actual person. <laughs> but you get to know them more intimately, in a sense, because you're not just taking a quick look at a bunch of instances in their life. This is um, delving deep into one. And it doesn't give you the full the full scope of who they, how they became who they are, but it gives you a good look at who they are, you know? Uh, so it's, I guess it's, it's that versus, it's like, you know, you can watch Darth Vader in Star Wars or you can watch the prequels and find out he, how he became Darth Vader. I'm not comparing her to Darth Vader, but you know what I'm saying. It's like, you can see how they got to that point or you can see who they are at that point. And, uh, you know, cause it's hard to do both with a allotted time, but, um, because, yeah, focusing on this one circumstance and, uh, for an entire movie, some would some would say that that's, you know, uh, that's that's too much time spent on something that should be a uh, much shorter period of the movie. But, yeah, you get a much deeper look at, the, at them. So, so it's not what a lot of people probably expect from a movie called Jackie, about Jackie Kennedy. But... It is, it is still really excellent. It's just a different kind of thing. And it's really well done. And um, yeah, uh, I'm not saying that I would watch it a bunch more times, but that's just because it's not the kind of subject matter that, because <laughs> it is, it is uh, if you're not really into it, you know, for whatever your reason, whether it's Natalie Portman or the or the actual person of uh, Jackie Kennedy or, or you know, a anything like that, uh, if you're not willing to commit to watching it, um, you might find it tedious because it, you know, you kind of might want them to move on to something other than the subject of the funeral because that's a big thing. But there's so many things going th going through her mind and it just in the situation that it, you know like i said it's a big thing you, you get to know this person uh more this way but um yeah you know so it's not going to be for everybody i guess um but it's very well acted for the route they took it's very well done um i would have to say you know if you're interested knowing what i just said then see it uh it's probably an oscar bait kind of movie but you know any movie about a real person is an Oscar Oscar bait kind of movie, <laughs> so uh, and you know she did an amazing job. Natalie Portman was amazing in this, um, and so yeah, uh, I I thought it was great. Um, it's not my kind of thing for repeat viewings or anything. My mom wants to own a copy. My mom really really loved it. I think um, she she said she she wanted to own it and she wanted to see it again. You know multiple times so uh um and my little sister said it was really good but she probably wouldn't watch it again uh or maybe you know maybe one time maybe but no she 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 said it was very good but it's just you know it's a very it's a serious and depressing kind of a movie there is a graphic scene uh closer towards the end of the movie they do finally show the reenactment of the assassination and it is gory uh it's quick but it's gory um so just you know for your information and uh yeah there's there's not much else to say it was very good the acting was very good but it's it might not be what you expect and because of that it might not be for everybody uh but great great film really uh just not everyone's cup of tea um I'm glad I saw it one time, you know. Um, maybe someday I'll see it again, you know. Uh, probably when I get it from my mom, like, next Christmas or whatever. <laughs> but anyway, so that's that. And uh, I'll be back soon before Christmas with a... Uh, a I want to do a video uh, just uh, talking about Disney Christmas movies and specials. Um, we're doing Disney Christmas this year. I want to do a video of my Disney Christmas tree, which is why I posted that video recently of my Star Wars Christmas tree from last year. This year we did a Disney Christmas tree. 
Um, I might intro that video, or I might just post the video of the tree, I don't know. Uh, like I did with the Star Wars one, I didn't intro that at all, but I did write in the, you know, the description uh, some information that's worth reading if you liked the tree, uh, the Star Wars tree. So, um, or if you have any questions, you know, go back to that video. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section or read the description because I wrote a lot of info there. But yeah, I want to do a, a Disney tree video like that too. Um, and uh, I want, like I said, I want to do a video where I talk about um, Disney and Christmas movies because I, I'm, you know, <laughs> keeping in the Disney theme that we're having this year. I have a huge Christmas movie and specials collection and holiday specials in general. I have like two shelves uh, devoted to uh, holidays. And I mean, I mean, you know, it could be bigger even still. <laughs> I don't have all those cable movies <laughs> but but I do have a, a pretty big collection so I'm just gonna focus on the Disney ones uh, and next year maybe I'll get to that video I wanted to do about versions of a Christmas Carol uh, there are so many and I love them all I'm a huge Christmas Carol fan and um, yeah I, I want to do one on one of these Halloweens where I just talk about all the Sleepy Hollow versions out there but I, I better say goodbye before this uh, thing runs out of space so <laughs> So happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and everything else, and I will um, be back hopefully with a couple more videos before Christmas, you know, hopefully. <laughs> okay, I'll see you then.